All right, ladies and gents, are you ready for Jasmine? Because Jasmine's ready for you. Yes, this is a video I've been requested so many times and I thought I could not do the video as I wanted to do a top 20 type video of 20 different Jasmine fragrances. And sure enough, I went through my entire collection and there's probably a few more hidden in there somewhere, but I've got 21 total Jasmine fragrances for you today. 21. Are you ready for Jasmine? Yes, Jasmine's ready for you and I'm going to let you know all about these Jasmine fragrances coming right up. Yes, today it's all about Jasmine fragrances, a flower that I really enjoy the smell of, but very difficult for me to get used to Jasmine in fragrances. Uh, it can go fecal, it can go indolic and all that kind of stuff because jasmine can smell a little dirty. Not a little actually, a lot. So, but sure enough I've got so many jasmine fragrances and I'm going to let you know all about these. We've got designers, we've got lots of niche obviously, a few indies here and there as well. But really great jasmine fragrances depending on what kind of uh, jasmine you like. We have a few animalics and a few, you know, very fresh kind of uh, jasmine fragrances, but some going in unique directions, but all focusing on jasmine. But we'll let you know all about them, but before I do, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So I do want to let you know I'm still doing, well, I'm not still doing, I just started doing, uh, tagging the fragrances in the info box if it's a, uh, a women's targeted release, a men's targeted release, or a unisex targeted release. So in today's video, there's mostly unisex and some women's targeted fragrances, but it's funny. Um, some of them to me smell more masculine and they're targeted for women. And then some of them smell more feminine, but they're targeted unisex. So this is something that you guys have to decide yourself. I'm going to put down what they're targeted as and I'm looking at, at the databases and it's also interesting some databases say it's for women, some say unisex. So it's kind of like a thing that you have to decide on your own. I'm doing my best to tag them uh, or you know mark them as unisex or for men or for women but again it's, it's up to you because some can be marked unisex and some men might say it's too feminine and then some uh, would be marked unisex and some women might say it's too masculine so it's all very very subjective you decide on your own but this is the best I could do with these fragrances but we're going to go ahead and start with the number one uh, for uh, jasmine fragrances this is from the house of Bruno Acampora this is Azzurro de Capri yummy yummy jasmine fragrance fragrance. Uh, and again, the, a trend you're going to see in these fragrances that jasmine and orange blossom marries beautifully together. And we're going to uh, see that uh, type of um, marriage come up in the different fragrances. You'll, you'll hear it, but this particular one definitely has those two notes together. It's got lots of jasmine, lots of orange blossom, bergamot, mandarin, also orange, the fruit, lily of the valley, patchouli, musk and amber. I'm actually uh, showcasing the Eau de Parfum today, but I also have the X-ray version, which is actually even more concentrated, lasts a long, long time, smells fantastic. But if you want it a little lighter, definitely go with the Eau de Parfum. But it's a great fragrance that you can smell, spray and wear liberally in the summertime in the heat the fragrance just comes alive and it's a gorgeous gorgeous smell really one of the best jasmine fragrances and again it's a jasmine orange blossom combo and as i said they do marry beautifully together so azzurro de capri from the house of bruna acampora and that uh, the first one uh, i'm going to talk to you about the next one is going in a complete different direction going to the house of forte manley this is charlatan probably one of the best jasmine fragrances but this one's definitely darker muskier little animalic and the jasmine in here is definitely the indolic kind could come off smelling a little dirty which uh, is <laughs> just so good this is actually like sex in a bottle delicious jasmine fragrance featuring lots of jasmine with rose truffles these are the truffles that you dig under the ground that are very very expensive pear dark chocolate vanilla amber, osmanthus, and sandalwood. One of the best fragrances for me. It reminds me of Noir de Noir from Tom Ford with the, you know, a boost of jasmine. Animalic, indolic jasmine. If you like Noir de Noir and you're looking for something with a little different twist, you gotta check this one out. It's probably one of the best 
jasmine fragrances out there and it smells fantastic just be warned it's an indolic jasmine so it could come off a little fecal so anyway fortune manly charlatan second fragrance i'm going to talk to you about today the third one's going to the house of van cleef and arpels this is california reverie going complete different direction and i love the name of this fragrance not because it's because I live in California, but I think it makes sense because here in California, I see a lot of jasmine, a lot of jasmine everywhere. There's a lot of it, and when it's warm outside, you can smell it. When you walk by it, you can totally smell it. And here, they've done a great job with this one. It's actually one of my favorite Van Cleef and Arpel fragrances. The smell is really, really fantastic. It's fresh, refreshing, and actually, if you compare it to this, it's actually a lot fresher, or fresher because this particular one uses a lot more citruses rather than the citrus flowers. Uh, but this has uh, jasmine sambac, neroli, mandarin orange, frangipani, be beeswax, and vanilla. So there is a little bit of a, a tropical-esque touch to it. And even though California doesn't really get too tropical unless you go down south, does it get tropical down there? I don't know. I'm in Northern California. So, but yeah, this is a great, great fresh take on a jasmine and I absolutely really love it. Uh, it's California Reverie. Uh, again, it, these bottles leak sometimes. Unfortunately, these are not the best sprayers, but anyway, they are okay. But either way, check this one out if you like a fresh jasmine fragrance. The next one going to the house of Amouage. This is Portrayal Woman. Oh my God. This is actually, this is targeted to women. I'm not going to mention what sex each fragrance is for. As I said, you can look in the info box. It's marked there. But I'm going to talk about this one because it is a masculine-leaning uh, jasmine fragrance because they've taken jasmine and combined it with tobacco. Tobacco to me is a masculine note. Jasmine to me is a feminine note. That's what it is. Again, there's no gender behind fragrances, but you guys want to know, so I'm doing this. But still, people make their you know uh, decisions on, okay, this is unisex, but it smells too feminine. This is unisex, it smells too masculine. You have to decide on your own. And some women that might think this is a great jasmine fragrance from reading about it might, might smell it and say, oh, it's too masculine for me because the tobacco is too strong. But I think it's a really, really great gender-bending fragrance with jasmine, tobacco, elemi resin, and vanilla. It smells really, really great, guys. The dirty, ashy tobacco contrasted with that beautiful jasmine. Lightly, I guess it's very, very lightly animalic, not too much, or indolic from the jasmine. But the combination of notes is really, really great. I think Portrayal Woman and Portrayal Man in this series from Amouage were amazing. Both of them really, really great releases. This one's created by Anique Minardo, a great perfumer. So that is Portrayal Woman from the house of Amouage. All right, next going to the house of Lancome. This is Jasmine's Marzipan. Here we go into a slightly nutty, almondy, gourmand direction, kind of going into like a marzipan, obviously. It's called Jasmine's Marzipan. And it's a great, great idea. Jasmine and marzipan, or the almondy touch from the marzipan, works really, really wonderfully together. It really, really does. But here we've got jasmine sambac, jasmine as a flower, almonds, woods, musk, bourbon vanilla, cashmere wood, sandalwood. So it's musky, it's woody, it's ambery, but lots of flowers with the almondy touches. And it really has a kind of like a floral gourmand combination that really does smell fantastic. I only thing on this one is it does smell a little thin to me. I don't know. Uh, some people have said it's gone through a reformulation and this is the first time I've discovered it uh, uh, post uh, a reformulation as I don't know how it smelled prior. Was it a lot more oomphier, like more deeper, richer? I mean, it smells great, but I just think it's a little thin, just a little. Either way though, it smells fantastic. Jasmine's Marzipan is a great, great jasmine fragrance. This next one is from the house of Chalini. This is Jardin Nocturne. Now this is the most animalic jasmine fragrance I have in here today. If you like it animalic, if you like it funky, musky, uh, indolic, animalic, fecal, this is the one you gotta try. This is like taking the most concentrated form of the most indolic jasmine, bottling it. Now, I don't know if it's from the jasmine or the oud that's in here or the musk that's in here also, but the combination is like in your face jasmine that's the most indolic and animalic, but it features jasmine, saffron, oud, sandalwood, and musk, and it's a great fragrance. Just a little goes a long way, and as I said, if you can't tolerate indolic, animalic, don't go for this one. Do not. If you can, definitely check this one out because it's really, really great. So 
Uh, this is Shalini or Shalini Jardin Nocturne. The next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is from the house of Maison Violet. This is Compliment. This is a fragrance created by Nathalie Larson. And I started uh, sampling this one recently and I thought, wow, this is a great jasmine fragrance. It starts out with lots of jasmine, but then slowly it kind of becomes a, a tuberose focused fragrance. So it's jasmine and tuberose together. Uh, you get the best of both of those worlds, but it's a beautiful fragrance. It does hint a little bit at something like we do have blue angels flying over today, so sorry for the noise. Uh, it does uh, hint at a little bit at something like carnal flower, but it's its own unique creation. But this has jasmine sambac, tuberose, jasmine flower, orange blossom, ylang ylang, hawthorn, heliotrope, benzoin, vanilla. So eventually it settles to a kind of a resinous vanillic amber, but there are some, um, you know, almondy light powdery touches, but lots of flowers, of course. It's the jasmine, the tuberose, orange blossom, and the ylang ylang. If you like a floral, definitely check this one out. And I'm really, really impressed with the fragrances from this house. Uh, I don't know if it's because of it's Natalie uh, Lorsan's creations and I'm kind of like I connect with her uh, fragrances or just the fact that these are really great re releases. Either way, a great fragrance from the house of Maison Violet compliment. I think that's their latest release from that house. Next, going to the house of Sigil. This is Anima Mundi, this one right here. And this is one I discovered recently from uh, ZGO Perfumery and I bought it there and it was an instant love. But you know what, to me, this is more of a warm weather jasmine fragrance and it just blooms in the warmth rather than in a cool environment but Anima Mundi features jasmine, rose, hinoki wood, tuberose and immortel. There is that little bit of a caramelized sugar brown sugar kind of thing with the immortel in here but lots of jasmine. It doesn't go animalic or anything maybe it lightly hints at the the indolic stuff but it's lots of jasmine with rose, a little hinoki wood, like cypress wood, and of course tuberose comes in as well. Great fragrance from the House of Sigil. If you don't know this house, check it out. This bottle is also really, really great. Anyway, that is Anima Mundi. Next, going to the House of Paris Monte Carlo. This is Jasmine de Pays, this one right here. This is created by Jean-Claude Elena. After he left Hermes, he created fragrances for... Uh, this house, um, Paris Monte Carlo, he's done fragrances for Laboratorio Olfativo. So I think he's not bound to, you know, like contracted to one brand anymore, which is kind of cool. And he did a great job with this one. This one's really, really intense. And it's not necessarily indolic, but it's light hints of the indolic touches, but a beautiful jasmine fragrance with lots of jasmine marigold, musk, and cloves. Yes, you get a little bit of warmth in this one. The combination of the cloves in here contrasted with the jasmine is really, really unique. I really like that about it. And this is a great house, slightly underrated, but I think, um, you know, uh, Jean-Claude Elena did a great job with this particular jasmine fragrance. Uh, I want to explore the rest of the fragrances in this collection that are created by Jean-Claude Elena, but this Jasmine de Pays is really, really a great Jasmine fragrance. So check that out. This is Paris Monte Carlo Jasmine de Pays. That's the ninth fragrance I'm talking to you today. And this is not a rank list, by the way, guys. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the video. I spoke about this one over the weekend in my video of fragrances created by Francis Kirkjian. If you haven't heard, Francis Kirkjian has been named the Dior in-house creative director perfumer for Christian Dior. Exciting stuff. If you haven't caught that video, go catch it. But this is Ciel de Gum from the house of Francis, Maison Francis Kirkjian. And this is mostly about jasmine and uh, amber together with spicy touches. And I get lots of uh, cinnamony touches in here. Very, very spicy, like cinnamon hot. Red Hots kind of comes to mind a little bit, uh, which I forgot to mention the other day, but that's what it is. It's like very, very hot, spicy cinnamon with lots of amber, jasmine, cinnamon, vanilla, and pink pepper. Probably one of the best creations from Francis Kirkjian and of course the brand Maison Francis Kirkjian. And it's a great warm, spicy, uh, syrupy, vanillic, ambery uh, kind of a jasmine fragrance. So it's completely different than these. Probably the most warmest uh, out of all of the ones I've spoken about today. And taking amber with a floral direction is very, very unique to me. One that I really love. So here it is, Maison Francis Kirkjian Ciel de Gum. Uh, wonderful, wonderful fragrance. This next one, going to the house of Jeroboam. It's Boha, this one right here. Boha is all about jasmine, but there's lots of other flowers and wood 
woods in here. Uh, Boha features lots of jasmine, almonds, sandalwood, violet leaf, orange blossom, bergamot, musk, and oak moss. And as you can see, jasmine, orange blossom comes up again. This flower and jasmine together are best friends. They really do complement one another. When I smell orange blossom, I do get a little bit of a jasmine-y touch and vice versa. Although orange blossom not necessarily goes in Dalek, jasmine definitely does, but there are hints of one and the other in each of the flowers. And they do complement wonderfully together. But here, we do have lots of musk. We have also lots of almonds uh, in contrast with the jasmine and the sandalwood with the ozonic touches of the violet leaf. It's a really, really gorgeous fragrance. Really beautiful white floral fragrance. Very, very musky and floral. If you don't know this one, check it out. It's uh, Jeroboam Boha. And uh, it is spelled B-O-H-A. I am not pronouncing it correctly. I know there's a different uh, pronunciation for this fragrance. Unfortunately, I don't know it. Either way, check out Jeroboam's Boha here today. A great jasmine fragrance. This next one is going to the house of Hermes. This is Le Jardin Missioli. If I can find the name on here, it's so light. This is it right here. This is Le Jardin de Missioli. Uh, it's a little complicated, but this is part of their garden series of fragrances. Uh, I really do enjoy this collection. And in fact, there's a whole video on this collection on the channel. If you don't know it, go check it out. But this particular fragrance focuses on jasmine with kumquat, mint, and green sap. It's a fresh take on uh, the jasmine note. It's not indolic. It's just a beautiful, you know, jasmine, fragrant jasmine bush come alive with contrasting with the kumquat note, so bitter, kind of uh, zingy, tart uh, citrus, uh, and then you've got that uh, green sap note. It's not overly complex, but it smells great. I would highly recommend you wear this one when it's really, really hot outside. So this is Hermès Le Jardin de Moussioli from the house of Hermès. Next, going to the house of Mugler. Yes, we can't forget Mugler. This is Alien, uh, and Alien, I'm, I mean, I'm featuring the original Alien. I was thinking about featuring Goddess, but Goddess is mostly vanilla and um, coconutty, beachy, rather than jasmine. So we're not talking about that one. We're talking about the original, which is mostly about jasmine, woods, and amber. Great, great fragrance, very, very popular for Mugler hence why they called their latest fragrance goddess, Alien Goddess, even though it hardly has any jasmine in it, but this is the one that started it all back in the mid-2000s, and I think it's still pretty popular for the brand, um, at least I think it is. I'm not sure, I think it's a little more popular than even Angel, the original Angel. I could be wrong, but it's a great fragrance. It's not overly complex, but it's pretty intense with the jasmine against the amber and the woods. So that is Alien from the House of Mugler. Uh, check that out if you don't know it. This next one's going to the house of uh, Veronique Gabay. This is a Jasmine de Minuit. A great, great fresh jasmine fragrance. And this one features some woods and earthy, grassy vetiver along with the jasmine. But overall, though, it wears fresh. There's some light marine touches in here as well. So it's a tolerable fragrance and it's perfect for warm weather. But it's also perfect for all year round. But it's mostly about jasmine, vetiver, patchouli, and marine notes. It's not overly complex. It's a great white flower, and you've got the kind of contrasting notes of the vetiver. Uh, the earthy vetiver, of course, earthy patchouli with, uh, you know, light kind of like a sea breezy kind of marine notes thrown in there. A great scent, fresh wear, Veronique Gabay, Jasmine. Another one that you should definitely check out, and I've got a full review of this one on the channel. This is from the house of Indie House of Blackbird. This is Y06-S. If you don't know this one, do check it out. This one is interesting. Um, it's a very unique fragrance and it's contrasts once again. So there's banana note in here contrasted with jasmine. So there's the first interesting contrast. Then you have milk and oud contrasted together, but all of these notes are contrasting together beautifully. And then there's throwing in this kind of a, a chord smell of electronics all in here. Very, very unique fragrance, but you know, Definitely jasmine. It's lots of jasmine. It develops into the banana and then it becomes milky, little earth, you know, woody from the the oody woody from the oud, and then that kind of like electronics uh, kind of a uh, note, which is not overwhelming, kind of develops here. I actually worked in electronics uh, when I was going to high school and right out of high school, so I kind of get that smell in here. It's a very, very unique fragrance, very, um, you know, uh, kind of playful, but. Uh, uh, a little avant-garde, a little left field, and really, really fun uh, to kind of like wear this one and to experience these notes that are in here. So Blackbird Y06-S, 
S, not as. Uh, that is another great uh, jasmine fragrance for you to check out. All right, more jasmine left. Jasmine is still here. So jasmine uh, is appearing in this particular fragrance from Atelier d'Azores. This is Nuda Veritas. And again, this one, uh, once again, is a very fresh and marine take on jasmine. Again, it's a beautiful salty jasmine fragrance that I really, really like. There is a kind of a marine calone-like note in here, a synthetic molecule or synthetic note that kind of takes, uh, gives you the smell of like the sea, uh, you know, the, uh, the marine type of, type of a note. But there's lots of jasmine sandback, jasmine in addition to the jasmine sandback, osmanthus, tr flower, calone, orange blossom, bergamot, ambret, ambroxan. See, the orange blossom appeared again, and I think, as I said, they do blend beautifully together. But lots of jasmine with this one, lots of jasmine in addition to the jasmine sandback. Osmanthus adds light, uh, you know, light uh, peachy fruitiness in there, a little bit of a leatheriness in there. There's some light tropical touches in here and lots of muskiness. A great, great fragrance. This is wonderful. And I usually don't like this note of calone because it becomes too fishy for me. But here, I don't get it as much, so it's a tolerable amount in the fragrance. Beautiful fragrance, Nuda Veritas from the House of Atelier d'Azores, a great fragrance featuring a jasmine. Next, going to the House of Louis Vuitton, this is Turbulences, this one right here. This one, uh, to me, is a very uh, Louis Vuitton, first series of, of fragrances, a collection of fragrance kind of a thing. I, I don't know if I, I, I said that correctly. Well, this was in the first launch of uh, fragrances for Louis Vuitton in the first set of fragrances that were targeted to women. And there's kind of a DNA running throughout all these fragrances that remind me of one another. This one focuses on jasmine, but it's contrasted with leather. So it's a great combination of leather and jasmine. I had a friend that bought this one and then she actually didn't like it anymore. So the leather kind of got to her. If you hate leather, don't get this one. But I like the contrast of leather and jasmine together. But there's also some tuberose, musk, magnolia, rose, and sandalwood. And the combination is a wonderful fragrance. It's watery, and that's the DNA that's kind of running throughout the whole uh, first series. Well, a lot of the latter uh, women's fragrances that came after this first series has this kind of like watery kind of thing running throughout it, but it's very, very pro prominent and noticeable in Turbulences. So anyway, Louis Vuitton Turbulences, a great fragrance featuring a jasmine. The next one I'm talking about, I have a tiny little bottle, tiny bottle, from the house of Wilhelm Parfumerie. This is Fleur Burlesque, a little bit left in here, so probably we'll have to get a larger bottle. This one to me is a fusion of uh, jasmine and gardenia together. It's a beautiful, beautiful combination. It's very, very fresh and also woody with sandalwood and amber and the combination of the notes are gorgeous. The jasmine and uh, uh, gardenia are kind of equal, so you get equal amounts of both. So if you like both smells, I think this is a perfect fragrance for you. But just keep in mind, it kind of dries down to woods, sandalwood, creamy, and then of course amber, kind of vanillic and warm and resinous and balsamic. So that's Vil Hel Wilhelm Parfumery. Fleur Burlesque, a great fragrance featuring jasmine. This next one's from the House of Dior. This is Grand Ball. I've had so many jasmine fragrances in my collection, and this one actually definitely Dior-esque. It's also kind of resinous, but a beautiful jasmine fragrance com combined once again with orange blossom. So it features jasmine, orange blossom, ylang ylang, peach, hedion, white musk, sandalwood, and bergamot. But you know, it's a, it's a beautiful fragrance, it's powdery, it's fresh, but not necessarily ultra fresh. You've got some kind of deeper notes in there as well. Uh, and of course, um, it has a kind of a woody dry down with uh, the sandalwood, but it's it's pretty nice. It's definitely one, not one of the more popular uh, Dior fragrances from the Privé collection. I, I think it has its following, and uh, I think if you like a great, uh, you know, deep kind of a jasmine fragrance, not necessarily fresh, but also not necessarily overly uh, intense, this is definitely a great, uh, you know, jasmine fragrance to look into. So that's Dior Grand Ball. And last but not least, this is a fairly new one, but I'm going to discuss it with you today. It's a fragrance created by Bertrand de Chafoux for the house of Maison Crivelli. This is Fleur Diamantine, this one right here. And again, jasmine and orange blossom. And this is a very, very fresh fragrance experience. And you can totally liberally spray this stuff and it won't overwhelm. But you got to love jasmine, obviously. Jasmine, orange blossom, mint, oak moss, saffron, and cumin.
coumarin. Coumarin is the tonka bean. It's a great fragrance. I think uh, I think that Bertrand du Chaffaut has done a great job with this one, but it's also very, very fresh, so not necessarily overly complex. It's just a pleasant smelling fragrance focusing on jasmine and orange blossom. That smells actually really, really nice. So that's Maison Crivelli Fleur Diamantine. And that's the last fragrance I'm going to talk to you about. Stay tuned uh, until after the outro. There will be one more fragrance. But that's, that's it for uh, 20 jasmine fragrances. What are your thoughts on these fragrances and do you enjoy jasmine as a note? And also, if you're a man, do you find jasmine to be very feminine? And if you're a woman, do you think men can totally pull off wearing jasmine? Let me know, put some comments down. Also, if you're a man and you have some favorite jasmine fragrances, let me know. And then women also, ladies also, just let me know what are your favorite jasmine fragrances and which jasmine fragrances I should look into now that you've seen what I have in my collection. Either way, uh, everyone, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. I'm going to end the video with one last fragrance, and this is a fragrance house launched by my friend Angelo's Creations Olfactives, and he has a fragrance that he had given me a long time ago called Yasemi. This is it right here. Oh my god, this is the most intense and most complex jasmine fragrance that's to die for. It does get a little indolic for me and a little animalic. I almost feel like there's a little oud in this one. But man, it smells really, really fantastic. So if you like it, deep and rich, complex, lots of real amazing notes working beautifully together. In fact, I did a video with him via Zoom and we had a giveaway for one bottle and the winner selected this particular fragrance, Yasemi. But this Yasemi features jasmine absolute, geranium, ambergris, musk, blue chamomile, ambrette seeds, pink pepper, blood oranges, aldehydes, muguet, patchouli, labdanum. And this one doesn't have the orange blossom, but it has oranges and it has the muguet, which is Lily of the Valley, but beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fragrance, really, really long lasting, intense experience with lots of jasmine and a lot of other notes that play wonderfully together. Either way, that's Yasemi from the House of Angelo's Creations Olfactives, and that is the last fragrance and the bonus fragrance for you guys. Thanks so much for watching today. Stay tuned for more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.